following presentation is for educational purposes only. All of the symbols, trading ideas, and live trading are for demonstrational purposes and are not recommendations or trading advice. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. All of the information and opinions expressed by third-party guests are their own and are not necessarily those of Ninja Trader LLC. Trading futures involve substantial risk and may not be suitable for everyone, and trading futures can result in losses greater than the initial required margin. Traders should only trade features with risk capital. Risk capital is money that you can afford to lose without jeopardizing your financial security or current lifestyle. You can find additional disclosure information on the Ninja Trader website. Well, good morning. Welcome back. Here we are with Trader's Workshop. Uh, this is the uh, Trader's Workshop segment of our live stream. And Jim has taken a nice break and let me take over because we are very pleased to welcome back to Traders Workshop, to the Ninja Trader live stream, uh, one of the legendary greats trading, Larry Williams. Larry, how are you doing today? Well, Tom, I've been in and out of bed the last couple of weeks with pneumonia, so I'll be coughing a lot today probably, and my voice might be a little broken, but the show goes on, so I've got a lot of things I want to talk about. So I'm here. We're going to have a good show today. Well, and we really appreciate you coming on. Um, by the way, this is our second full day of doing this new format. And, you know, we couldn't have been more pleased that you agreed to do this uh, time slot with us. And hearing that you were sick, of course, you know, we're we're really grateful that you can power through. Um, but, you know, you, you mentioned some of the markets you're going to talk about. I'm excited to, to see what it is. But how have you been otherwise? Uh, we've, it's been about three months since we've seen you. Everything good otherwise? Yeah, everything's been good. You know, I'm almost 82, still trading, so, and that's what a phenomenal life. You know, happily married and, and trading with a good deal of success. So what what could be better? <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything is fine, except I just, we went to a fundraiser down here for the local country day school, and a lot of, I don't know, a couple other people there, and the next day this thing started. I've been battling it. Thanks to modern science and antibiotics. I think I finally turned the corner, but you know what probably really did it was I knew I had to be ready by today for you. <laughs> so I think that was a big motivation. And to explain what I calling my Jesse Livermore trade in soybeans, I'm really excited about a trade here. So uh, that's been part of the motivation to be here as well. Well, we, again, we really thank uh, thank you for that. And maybe uh, Mission Control, if we could go to the chart, because I, when you said Jesse Livermore uh, trade when in your email, you know, I can't wait to see what it is because we've all we've all heard about Jesse Livermore, uh, Confessions of a Stock uh, Operator, um, but you know, how is that applied? It's it's rare to see that applied. I think when people people read the book and they say, well, what does that mean? What you know, it's a lot of stories, but to hear somebody like you talk about what that is, I'm very interested to hear. Well, I've been reading a lot about Jesse Livermore this year, and there's a lot of wisdom, and not the reminiscence book but a couple other autobiographies that have been written about him. Clearly, he was the most successful trader of all times, made, what, $110 million in 1929 crash, which would be $100 billion today. And he was also the most spectacular failure in the market. He lost all that money, and he ended up committing suicide. So he, he had a lot of good things going for him and a lot of bad things. And I tried to figure out, why he could be the best trader and the worst trader. And I think I really nailed it down. It, consistently in all of his trades, as you look at them, he never used any money management. He had no risk control. Probably because he began in bucket shops where you'd put up $100 and if the stock went down $100, you're out. If it went up, you made a lot of money. So there was kind of an automatic risk control, like an option. Um, so he never really learned money management. And so he was a plunger all the time, but he did have some phenomenal trades. And one of the rules or understandings I got was that the difference between a gambler and a speculator is a gambler is like flipping a coin. It, the market's going to go up for a day or down for a day. And that's a gamble, but a speculator, which Livermore saw himself as being as somebody who can perceive a large move in the future. But even at that, Livermore adds, um, he would test the market by buying, and if he was wrong, he knew immediately he lost money, he would get out. So ultimately, his strategy developed to be buy new highs. So if we look at this chart of soybeans on a weekly basis, 
Uh, clearly, if you start looking at, say, 2021, huge write up in the market. Probably per precursor of it was a red line, which is a net long commercial position. The commercial that I think are the smartest guys in the market. And if we look at where they are now, this is the largest net long position they've ever had. So they're extremely bullish on this market. And if you look at the high levels going across, you'll see that almost always when they've been this successfully bullish in the market, soybeans have rallied. The question is, on, and that was another thing Livermore talked about, he said one of the elements that took him a long time to discover was timing, when to get in. And his solution to timing was simply wait for a breakout because as prices run, look at the long-term chart. When they start to run, they run. So I think that's the setup that we have right now, commercial wildly bullish. And in this complex, soybean oil has been the strongest. Typically, soybeans move more. You know, a soybean meal moves more in a bull market. But this year, soybean oil has been the strongest of the complex. So, Larry, real quick, is there a little bit of an offset with that commercial, uh, um, the, the commercial uh, traders, um, commitment of traders, commercial portion that line down there so it looks like um the the they lead the market just a little bit is that what i'm seeing there sometimes uh like where i show right now they're right at the bottom uh if we look over here they just got net bullish right here right at the bottom and sometimes they're early so they're not a timing tool they're a setup tool yeah. and i think that's the big lesson to learn from a, in a trader report that that was a condition when you would expect, as Livermore talked about, a significant move to take place, but you still have to add the other element he talked about, timing. So, yeah, it's wildly bullish. In fact, I, I bought soybeans a while ago, got stopped out, lost money at it, uh, and I'm long beans now. We'll see what happens. But I, what I need to really make this a successful trade is to see the market uh, move and get a trend change in the market. Maybe I can get a let me move my charts a little bit here. I've got a little different setup on this. And um, we can look at uh, another chart that I had, hopefully. Let's see if I can do this. I'm, I can't. Well, what, what I'd like to see next would be to see on a daily basis, price get above an 18-day average, a 50-day move average. Then we know we're in an uptrend, Tom. So that's the next thing to look for, to know we are in a significant trend change. That's that's really important to find that next. Okay, so you said 18-day and 50-day, or either one. It depends on how close you are to the market. If you're really close to the market, then you, you'd want to look at um, uh, an 18-day average or 50-day sure. average. Anywhere in there, I think is going to work for us. Uh, so that, but all that's doing in Livermore's terminology is saying the trend's up. And his theory is when the trend is up, you you want to buy breakouts to new highs. You don't want to be um, uh, buying pullbacks. You, you want to buy breakouts. And most people don't want to break out to new, buy breakouts to new highs. They want to buy pullbacks in the marketplace. And he was very clear he didn't want to buy pullbacks. Now, here we see the 18-day average on soybeans. I didn't see where we are now. We're above the 18-day average, which means the trend's up. Now, we don't know how long it'll stay up. But the fact that commercials are net long is pretty bullish, suggesting we're, we're in a trend move now. So a breakout to new highs would be a buy plan in the market. Or whatever. You could use trend lines, you know, whatever you use. There's so many tools now. Right. Um, you you want to be willing to buy strength because of the bullishness exhibited by the commercials. It, it's it's taking that momentum idea and and having the market prove that you're you're in the right direction, right? Prove if you're bullish, prove it to me. Break out of this area, break out of this level, and and continue on that momentum. Right. There's a reason to be bullish. Your commercials are heavily long. They're really bullish. They own a lot of soybeans and meal and oil. So that's a condition, but it doesn't mean we'll rally right now. So let's say okay, let's wait for the trend. I mean, they were bullish. Back in February, and the market continued going lower. They continued buying more, by the way. But now, yeah, finally we turned the corner, and so let's buy strength as opposed to buying weakness in the market. And that's a little more trade. Yeah. And 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 to be fair, Richard Dennis, I think, had some of that uh, 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 philosophy as well, right? He would buy breakouts, and that's what he taught his turtle traders. 
The eternal trend is that we can't predict the future. We don't have any idea what's going to happen in the market. So we'll buy every 50-day breakout, sell every 50-day low. Well, I, I think you can tell when there's going to be significant moves in the marketplace. They, of course, to do the turtle system had to be in 50, 60, or 100 markets. They didn't know which one was going to run. It's like putting a chip on a roulette table. Right. One of the 37 chips is going to have moves. You don't know which one's going to win. Right. And I think right. we can tell when we're getting one that's going to win based on seasonal commitment to trade report, accumulation in the market, you know, a few other indicators. I think in the bean complex now and, and grains in general, uh, we're in a condition where we should see them rally. There is a bias to this market now, clearly. Great, great. That, that you know, that that is, a, I mean, that chart that is, I would say, classic in terms of that, that turn up of the moving average off the low, you're not going to get the bottom of the market. You know, you're not going to, you're not looking for the bottom of the market. You're looking for a proof of trend and, you know, moving to traders, cross of the moving averages, you throw in a momentum indicator, a volatility indicator to help you, um, you know, maybe do a little bit more timing with volatility. And, you know, you're, you know, that's a little more to the puzzle that you could do as a trader. I think the money in the market was largely lost buying bottoms and largely made buying strength. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so contrary because we all want to buy low. Every, you know, we go to Costco because prices are cheaper there. We right. want to buy low. And there can be a time for that, but you have to be very careful, be very discriminatory of that. But buying strength, strength usually begets strength. So, um, yeah, we got a market that's set up. I'm interested in buying a new breakout high in this market. So you mentioned bonds. I think that was the next, you you want to pivot to bonds because it's been behaving a little interesting. Is, interesting. We've been looking at the 10-year, uh, you could talk 30-year, um, but the treasuries in general, it looks like there was a, a bottom, a possible bottom put in, but with all this talk uh, of the Fed, you know, delaying the cuts, it seems like, well, maybe, maybe bonds haven't priced in a bottom yet. So just curious on your take. That's our take a little bit. Well, I am short, and I'm really close to my target. I mean, just a couple of ticks away. So I'm really nervous. I brought my stops way down today. But in terms of a longer term perspective, we're looking at a weekly chart of bonds. And the blue line is a forecast that I made in January. Let's let me go back to chart here. Yeah, we're not seeing it on our screen. Yeah, hold on a second. Let me see where we get that from. Um. Let's see. We're going to have it for in just a moment here. Is that show now, Tom? We should see that now. I see soybeans as well. Yeah, so we're, gonna hit, we're, we're just about there now. Sure. Okay. That one. <laughs> that and... Uh, you know, it's... There we go. See your cursor. There we go. Bear with me a second. Sure, no problem. Sorry about that. So, by the way, Larry, what but... we've done done too is we've opened up our chat room on the YouTube channel. Okay. So people can drop in questions if they'd like. Um, we do have somebody watching the YouTube chat. We have there our we regular go. chat and they can send us questions if they like. Okay. So the, the blue line is a forecast cycle forecast is cycles are good. They're a tool. They're not perfect. So Larry, um, I'm, I'm still seeing the soybeans chart. Oh, you are still maybe, seeing soybeans. Maybe you shared one panel of Ninja Trader instead of your screen. That's what I'm thinking. And that's uh, fine. You know how? No, I'm not back there. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay, let's try. Um, I apologize for this. That's okay. That's okay. Well, let, let, let's just, I'll try to talk through it. Sure, sure. In, in terms of long-term cycles, while we're trying to bring up this train, soybean, uh, treasury bonds, starting with a forecast done in January, 2022 have shown a significant low coming up in April. And of course, that was made a long time ago, and these, these cycle fluctuates quite a bit. The current 
forecast shows the exact same time period. Now, typically, bonds rally, really interesting point, when people pay income taxes. It's very surprising you would think that when people pay taxes, stock would come down and bonds would, would not rally. But in fact, it's really a bullish time in the stock market, usually for short-term trades, as well as the bond market. So that kind of fits in the seasonality of the bond market. And I see cycles are saying, we're, we're going to set up a buy point maybe between the 8th and 15th of April. I think that is the next significant large move opportunity coming in the bond market that's based on a cycle forecast made over a year ago as well as the most current cycle forecast so i think there's some real opportunity there um now do you see that chart let's see i think what we can do larry is Just see the bond chart let's see no we're still in the, we're so i think we, what we can do is maybe unshare your screen and then reshare unshare our screen right in, in zoom and then we can uh reshare I'll stop share. Yeah, stop that share. And okay, then we'll, and then we'll go share screen again. Huh? And we'll just do the entire technology. Yeah, no, this is great. Okay, now we'll reshare that that uh maybe the entire screen and then you can just move over the charts as you want. Uh, this, you know, this new format, we don't have a lot as much time to set up and so uh, well and you know and I'm there on now Okay, oh, there. Gosh, that's perfect. So, so you can see that area that I circled. That's the cyclical low coming up. It's around the first part of April, the middle of April. Uh, again, I don't expect these to be specific right to the day or to the week, but generally we see bonds should have a significant up move between now and end of July. We saw that the forecast for an October low, which is a great rally in the market. The reason I'm short now, uh, I have been, is because you can see the cycle forecast have been to the downside. So I think we do have an opportunity coming up in, in the bond market, and and that's one that I really want to pay attention to. And and Larry, when you say the bond market, are we talking thirty year? Are we saying just the treasuries in general? Is this a blend? What is this? The thirty year bonds. Thirty year bonds. Okay. Yeah. So we might expect something similar if we treat trade ten year or two year. Something. Yeah, they're all, they all rally together. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Look, so let's look at our next chart. This is a chart for the stock market. We'll switch gears. If bonds are going to rally, what does that mean to the stock market? I'm not certain, but in terms of an overall view of the stock market, there's two really interesting things going on. First is my cycle forecast that we see here. Just because we see that great big line coming to downside doesn't mean we'll have a massive decline, but it suggests that we should see selling pressures until May in this market. That's what cycles are saying. If you look at the commitment to trade report, in the stock index, as we see, they've been also on the short side of the market. So I think we have some reason to be looking for sells in the stock market at this time. To, but we're still in a bull market. Uh, I'm, I'm clear of that, that we'll see prices higher this year, especially after the election. Uh, but right now, I think there's a reason for some short-term selling in the market. One of them, Tom, let me see if we get our next chart here, is going to be the difference between what we've been seeing and the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500. This is really interesting what's taken place here. I'll try to pull up the next screen. The Dow Jones Average, as you know, represents the more quality stocks in the market. The S&P is a more speculative group. Uh, the NASDAQ is probably the most speculative group in the marketplace. And I think we can pull up the screen now. I think we're seeing that soybean screen again. Yeah, we just love to show the soybean chart. Don't we? <laughs> I uh, think it's subliminal. Uh, by the way, Larry, lots of well wishes for you to uh, oh, speedy, speedy recovery you. from the chats. Uh, we can't possibly put in every every comment. We'd spend well, I appreciate a whole half that hour reading. Much. They they are been significant. Um, so typically, when a stock market tops, the more speculative stocks will top will stop. And start to decline after the broad averages out. As you see now on the top, we have the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the YM contract. It made its high way over here. And the broader based S&P is up here. So the quality stocks really topped way over here. In fact, and Tom, this is something nobody's talking about. Look what we have here. We have a shoulder, we have a head, and we have a shoulder. We have a typical head and shoulder pattern for matrix. Where's your sell point? Real easy, drawing a trend line right up here. Penetration of that, to me, would be a significant trend change in the marketplace. That's what to be looking for here. 
So I am disturbed that I see that the Dow has been weaker than the more speculative stocks. That's usually how stock markets top. Yeah, and and you know, Larry, the the head and shoulders formation that can also be used as a a, a target, if you will. Once there is penetration of that neckline, you can use that distance from the neckline to the head to to I- identify a possible target. Um, with no time projection, right? It's just a price target. Um, Correct. And this would be another little more trade, right? Because if we do take out that trend line, we may not. But if we do, that's a trend change. And now with the trend, was based on the pattern, a couple of other things look negative here. That's a great point to be negative in the market or protect your long positions. That, well, wait a minute. The cycles, the ball game has changed for right now. So let's, let's acknowledge what's going on. So we see a lot of the hot stock, NVIDIA is broken, SCMI is broken. Uh, a lot of stocks have not performed suddenly like they have in the past. So we see some deterioration in the list. Uh, and now it looks like we have this divergence between the Dow Jones Industrials and the more speculative stocks. Uh, and that's usually how tops are made. The bottoms are interesting and different, Tom. Market bottoms, usually the speculative stocks bottom first mm-hmm. because speculators come in and start buying those stocks. And the, the Dow tends to bottom after the speculative stocks do. So if I see a lot of money coming in in speculative stocks after the, after a decline, that's bullish. But after a rally, just the other way around, it's bearish. Interesting. Interesting. Um, you know, there are a couple of things in my mind. You've talked about the uh, election year seasonality uh you know it seems to me that uh you know going back to um your projection of the stock and stock uh, market um mm-hmm. it's coming at a time you said you know you know not the intensity but the 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 pattern was down right stock market it projects a little bit of a retracement we don't know how much but that kind of goes in line with the election year uh seasonality which has been um, traditionally April into May. It's a it's a pullback, but then the rest of the year we see a little bit of a, a lift right through the rest of the year. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Is that something that's accurate? Is that something that obviously we can't say what's going to happen, but we can talk about what's happened in the past? Well, Tom, we can say what's going to happen. It just means it's going to. Oh, that's the right. problem. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Excuse me, but. Um, yeah, that's typical. The, the big point, though, in terms of a longer term, as far as I'm concerned, that's where the big money is. Are we in a bull market or are we in a bear market? Mm-hmm. I've been very clear since January 1. We are in a bull market. So it means you want to buy pullbacks in the bull market. You want to sell big rallies in the bull market. You don't want to get caught up by the Cassandras, the purveyors, the pessimism. P- prices will end the year higher. But there's going to be a real strong oversold point in this market. Can we say when? I think probably May, June. And so I'm prepared for that. If it happens then, whoa, man, all the chips go across the board because we are in a bull market. So don't get carried away by the, the pessimists out there, the perpetual bears. Ain't going to happen. We will stay in a bull market for another maybe year and a half. Then I think it may be time to get buried. But for right now, don't don't get sidetracked by all these little short-term things. Think bull market. Think what's the correct strategy for a bull market. Got it. Got it. Um, speaking of bull markets, I think you know we can touch on gold if you don't mind. Uh, your thoughts on gold? We gold had a really interesting run up. The cycles call that one perfectly. I had a huge run up. Right now, though, my cycles are suggesting gold's going to come down for a while, probably another couple of weeks, and then look for a bottom in the marketplace. I thought about selling it short. I'm not short gold. I'm looking at it. Oh, not quite what I want there. But I think that we'll see selling pressure to the downside in gold for maybe another month, then a buying point coming. So that's, you know, I'm not always clear on all these markets. Um, I don't have really good vision, let alone perfect vision in these things. But generally speaking, I, I don't think this is the time to rush in and buy gold. I think there'll be a better time coming up uh, to buy gold. I want to look at the commitment trade report. While look at the small traders, they tend to do exactly the wrong thing in gold. So when they get very bearish on gold again, I want to be a buyer. <laughs> well, that's that's you know that's a great point, which is seasonality is great, but you have to have other things to back it up, right? It's not just one tool in your toolbox. It or or it is one tool in your toolbox, but it's not the only tool in your toolbox. 
and you you want to complement it with other other you know examples of evidence, right? In, in high school, I had a locker on my, uh, and I had a combination locker, right? In high school, you probably have stuff. And it wasn't just one number to open up the lock. You had to go three left, four right, three left, one right, and then it opened up. And I think that's what it is in the market. You can't just have one number and the lock opens up to instant profits in the market. It's a combination of things. And of course, the more of those things there, the better it is. That's that, you know, I'd never heard that, Larry. That is a great analogy. I love it. I love Thank it. You. Um, I think, you know, this is a, a anything else you want to, you want to mention, Larry? I know, uh, you know, we're, we're running up against time a little bit, but is there anything, you know, well, I, I, I think the important thing is watch that trend line and the Dow Jones industrial average, um, prepare for a bond point around the 10th, maybe 8th of April, somewhere in that time frame. uh, l look for a trend change to get long the market. I think that's a significant setup coming and the soybeans one, you know, I'm, and I probably should be long soybean oil. That's been the strong one. There's actually been a flirting as a premium there. So look at the entire grain complex, especially beans. Look to see if there's a premium developing. That would be very bullish. And the big thing in that soybean complex, buy a breakout. Don't try to buy the bottom in here. Wait till the market has pulled back a little bit in here. When it starts to make new highs, that's the point you want to be your buyer because the, the market's ignited. It starts to move in a direction. And... As my dad always said, it's a lot easier to ride a horse in the direction he's going than the direction he's not going. And that's really the truth of the market. I mean, right. Why don't you hop aboard something's going up? Why, why do we always try to buy something's going down? Because we think it'll go up. But ride the horse in the direction the horse wants to go much easier. Well, Larry, thank you so much. Great advice. And uh, thanks for coming on to the show and being uh, an early guest in the new live stream. And we look forward to having you back on. How can people reach you? Uh, I prefer they don't. <laughs> but if they want to go to our website, it's ireallytrade.com. And, oh. and you know, it's always an honor to be on shows like that. So I think at my age, people want to listen to me talk. So I, I really appreciate that. I, I respect being asked to be here. And those who watch, I want to thank everybody for the support and following my work over the years, of course, as well. I appreciate you being here. Well, thanks again, Larry. Hope you feel better. And uh, we'll be doing this again soon, hopefully. Um, in the meantime, we're going to take a quick break and we'll finish up with Mike Burke. All of the symbols, trading ideas, and live trading are for demonstrational purposes and are not recommendations or trading advice. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. All of the information and opinions expressed by third-party guests are their own and are not necessarily those of Ninja Trader LLC. Trading futures involve substantial risk and may not be suitable for everyone, and trading futures can result in losses greater than the initial required margin. Traders should only trade features with risk capital. Risk capital is money that you can afford to lose without jeopardizing your financial security or current lifestyle. You can find additional disclosure information on the Ninja Trader website.